This semester, we've been working on the concept of passive dynamic walking. Most walking mechanisms or walking robots built today use very large control systems and motors to produce a very mechanistic look in their walking. It's very unnatural looking. Humans, on the other hand, use a more of a passive motion where gravity and inertia drive their legs very much like pendulums. This machine here, which is one of the first ones that we built, uses the concept of this passive motion uh, in a similar way. It's, two, it's basically two pendulums hooked together that are allowed to swing about the common axle. And this produces the periodic motion that you see in normal walking. This machine has been designed so that it will walk down shallow slopes using gravity as its only power source. In the following clips, you will see this machine walking down those shallow slopes. Uh, and you will also notice a particular problem that is inherent in this design. This machine here was built and constructed later to solve this particular problem. And we will describe how this works. This is 0.78% slope. This is 1.5% slope. Since the legs are of equal length, the problem is that they will scuff the ground as they walk. We solve this problem by alternately placing pads on the floor to lift the inner and outer legs. This is 2.2% slope. This is 2.9% slope. Here you can compare the gait of the walker to Andy Ruino's walking. Notice how similar they are. They even trip at the same place. The placement of and use of these pads constitutes engineering in the environment, something that we don't want to have to do if we're going to take this walker out on common slopes outside. So I'd really prefer not to use these. Thus, we've come up with this design. This machine, which we call Weevil, has been designed to lift its own feet out of the way so that effectively the pads are built into it. Now, this has two plexiglass plates here that have tracks that have been machined out of them. In the center here, we have a cam that is allowed to flip, and there's a spring on the back which returns it to place. On the outer legs, we have roller bearings that are mounted on the back sides of these pins, and they follow along the track. As this leg swings through, the roller bearings roll up onto the central cam, and by its design, they lift the outer legs up and provide a lift so that these legs can swing through without scuffing the ground. So now, if we take this and we walk it, we give it an initial push from the back. It will now, the outer legs will now swing through. They will lift, they will drop again, swing normally, strike the ground, and then the outer legs will lift. Now the wobbler in the center, this cam, has flipped. And so now the inner legs lift up, and they go through, and you hear the sound of the cam in the middle clicking so that it is flipped again. In this way, this machine can now walk along a slope, a gradual slope, uh, lifting its own feet up. We will now show you clips of this machine, Weeble, walking down various slopes between 1 and 5% grade at various locations around the campus. The right one hits first. Yeah, I noticed that. I'd like to say this slope starts out about 
1.5%. It looks like it probably starts to increase down to pound rates. parking lot of the Statler and way up at the top and right around here it's about 3.5 percent slope and we measured it down there and it increases a little bit to about 4.5 or 5. Scrapes now and then. These are your covers. The slope's getting pretty rough down here. Just pushing it to the limit. Is it going to make it? <laughs> That's how you get away without paying traffic. Parking. <laughs> These are in quad. There's Upton. And there's Lent. This is that long, long thing. It heads all the way down to the sundial. Right. Pretty nice slope, uh, something around 3%, though it increases a bit down the way. In front of the biotech building now, line is to our right. Try so hard. Yeah. 